on finishing well today? That's right. Go on, go on. Get all of your applause in. There's also offering tables in the back of the sanctuary. Please feel free to drop off your offerings as you enter or exit worship today. We also have our Mug Money mission. Our mission for this quarter is for Living Bridges. For more information on this scintillating and fascinating ministry, please contact Darcy Gunter. Children's Church are for those up to second grade. And when prompted, please exit quickly and quietly with your Children's Church leader. And if you are in need of any assistance, we have the ushers in the back. And we just want to thank everyone who helped participate at Fall Family Fund last Sunday. And of course, we could not have done it without the help of our wonderful volunteers. And we appreciate everyone who helped bring the fund at 1400. We have several events happening at our church. Today, there is an advisory board meeting right after worship in the fellowship hall. On November 21st, the kids will be having a Thanksgiving celebration. And on December 4th, the church will be at the Wheeler's Christmas Tree Farm. And for a full list of announcements, please check out our website at www.thechurchgrade.org. Now, let's prepare for worship, my dudes. Known by 
Welcome to the building at 1400. I'm looking for the church. We are here. <laughs> you, you are here. And you say I'm beautiful this morning. Uh, it must be that extra hour of sleep everybody got. Uh, whose electricity was off this morning? Uh, does Grady EMC like owe me for that hour? Because I really didn't get the hour. I'll call Adam. I appreciate y'all being here. Um, uh, those of you that are joining here, and uh, are we live or are we not? Kind of, sort of. Those of you that are kind of, sort of joining us online, we appreciate you being here, and those that will watch it hopefully online later on. Um, uh, last week was fun. Uh, last week, uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, it was the fall first fall family fun at 1400 it's easy to say um and uh if as we looked around last week we saw some people that we hadn't seen in a while it's actually uh since that thing there uh, there was a virus since that thing that was the most people that we've had here and um and i i think for the majority of people um the majority of us uh felt good i mean it wasn't wasn't overpowering or anything and, and we do appreciate those people that helped made it a big success. Um, next year, that would be October 30th. That Sunday's October 30th. And, and we're already looking at ways that we can make it bigger and uh, uh, even better next, next year. So Christmas in the South Mugs were unveiled um, at uh, Elevate. Uh, the 2021 image that's on the cub, uh, on the mug, the cub. Half cup, half mug, they're cubs. Uh, it's, uh, have you seen it outside? What's on it? The Zebulon. And, uh, and, uh, and I, I, I'll tell you, they've done extremely well, extremely well. We sold more, well, we didn't have them at Elevate, uh, I guess, one year. But, uh, so we sold more than we sold that year when we didn't have any out at Elevate. Uh, but we did really well, and then Center Drug, is, uh, they, we, we took a couple of cases down there, and almost immediately they sent me a picture that they had two left. But the mugs are out there, and they're, they're, um, you can purchase those for $15, and all the proceeds go to the Grady County Foster Parents Association, and uh, the idea is that we can give them funds uh, that they can use for uh, to purchase Christmas gifts or other. Uh, uh, one of the things that we had looked at, Paul, was was uh, there's a uh, uh, sometimes there's a need for training for foster parents, and there there's cost involved there. And so we were, you know, we we're hoping to be able to go beyond just the, the uh, just the um, uh, the Christmas gifts and actually be able to help support. And this year, it looks like the best year yet best year yet so and we haven't even really started so uh, grab your mug um, because once again we are already having to reorder those now today we are beginning a three-week message series called finishing well because the, the we've got three this Sunday and then two more Sundays and that will be the end of the Christian calendar and I'll be talking about that more uh, in the uh, in the message November 29th our Advent series begins because it's the first Sunday of Advent it's the heart that grew three sizes. Where are my Grinches? And all of us got a little bit of, <laughs> of that Grinch in us. Anyway, so um, uh, the heart that grew three sizes, and hopefully we will be well prepared for Christmas and having fun. But before we do that, we need to finish this year out well. And so I'm going to ask you to do three things, right? Invite. Invite. And show up yourself, yeah. yeah. <laughs> invite, invite, and because, you know, that is one of those things to where somebody sees you and, oh, this is where you go to church, and then they come here and show up, okay, show up. Uh, let me see. Um, uh, we're, during the prayer time, I know a lot of people have shared some things. I'll be sharing it in the group later, 
Um, I actually start vacation on Thursday, so I won't be here uh, next Sunday, but you'll be in good hands. Um, but uh, I do uh, I do ask that you pray for one another and take care of one another during that time when I am gone. But um, how many of you are me and you, you've got some unspoken stuff? I think all of us do, and he hears that as well. Let's take it all to him this morning. Lord, gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for loving us the way that you do. As we come to the end of this year, we're reminded of how many ways uh, that you've blessed us over and over. You've proven that you're faithful. In a year that was anything other than predictable, you remain the same. You remain true. You remain true. Uh, you remain faithful. We have heard your call to minister to others. Give us the courage to become more involved in the mission and ministry opportunities that you have provided. We come trusting you to provide everything that we need. Help each of us to become committed to cheerfully giving of our time, of our talents, of our resources in the coming year. We do recognize that there are people that are uh, dealing with illness, dealing with sickness, uh, anxiety, uh, that are uh, dealing with isolation. You came and you showed your love so that we might be able to experience love. Help us to be that your representatives as we represent you in this world. Help us to be ambassadors for the kingdom. And truly, uh, we're not supposed to be spectators, but rather we're supposed to go out and be involved in what's going on and be committed to, to the mission and ministry that you've laid out before us. Father, I'm so thankful for this congregation as, uh, as, we, as we have traveled through this year together and we, we've held together. Continue to make us encouragers of one another. Those times that we feel alone, um, uh, Father, we ask that you bring somebody into our presence that reminds us that, that you are still in charge, that you can make a way when we don't see how it is how it is to even um, come. Father, I ask that you allow us to live in such a way that our children come to know you more. We've been through a lot. We've seen a lot. Where they're still fresh, where they're still they're still young, and they're still learning. Help help us, and let us not be so jaded that that we spread negativity to them, but rather fill us with, with uh, purpose, fill us with hope, and fill us with your love so that they might be able to see it as well. We pray these things in the blessed and holy name of Jesus. Amen.
just the sum of every high and every low. Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know. Ooh, oh, you say. Over me, surging like a rain. 
One of my favorite message illustrations um, that I've never used. Um, yeah. You're about to hear it. Uh, it's been around since the 1950s, and I, I remember I've, I've heard several pastors uh, throughout the years use it. Um, it's a motivational story about a chicken and a pig. And uh, the two, it's told in a variety of ways, but the different the uh, farm animals are, are walking along and they, they look in and they see the farm family inside and so grateful for them and they know, they see how hard they work um, uh, throughout the day and everything. They want to do something really nice for the family and uh, it's usually told that the chicken comes up with the idea, uh, which makes sense um, after the story unfolds, but um, they want to give them a gift. They want to give them something and, and what better what better thing to do than to... Uh, give them a meal, a breakfast plate of ham and eggs. And at first glance, at first glance, at looking at it, it seems that they were they were both uh, contributing to that meal. Uh, but when you take a closer look, you have to make absolutely clear that the chicken providing the eggs was involved, and the pig was committed. You're right. Right, <laughs> reminds me of a joke. Uh, I'll tell you later. Uh, not today, not here. 
When it comes to our spiritual journey, uh, would you say that you are involved? Or are you committed? Are you involved? Or are you committed? And um, today what we're going to do is we're going to explore what, it, what giving it all means. What giving it all means. Because some of you, you hear that and all of a sudden you kind of freak out. Especially when we start getting close to Thanksgiving. You say, here he's going to talk about money. <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll be looking at that. So here we are in this new three-week message series. Uh, why? Because there's only three Sundays left in the Christian calendar. Right, we got this one, the next one, and then uh, the next one. So, and then we'll prepare for the new Christian calendar. Well, uh, the new year starts on Sunday, November the twenty eighth, and that's when we'll start looking at uh, uh, preparing for the coming of Christ. Yes, the second coming, but also uh, there at Christmas time, mostly our thoughts come to uh, preparing for that uh, that Christ coming in that very unexpected manner as the Christ child. But before we do that, before we get caught up in all the excitement and all the, uh, all the uh, things that we have to get done and all that, what I want us to do is I want us to pause right now, and I think it will serve us well th this week and the next two weeks, to kind of take inventory of a few things that are going on, uh, do a little checkup, do, uh, check our temps, um, uh, and, and see if there's any fine-tuning that's needed for us to finish this year well. When I say this year, I'm talking about uh, the Christian calendar. So today's message is actually entitled Giving It All, and we'll see um, how involved or how committed we are. Uh, hopefully that, that's something, um, and we'll see what that means deep down. Our scripture lesson today is going to come out of Mark's gospel, and uh, Jesus had been, right prior to this, he's been questioned by the by the priests, by the scribes, by the elders. And they're trying to trick him. They're, they're trying to catch him, say something wrong so that they can go and, and they've got something over. And now, I, I hope it's not a spoiler alert, but uh, Jesus schools them, right? Yeah, I mean, he, he takes care of business. He, he, he oh, uh, and, and you, you know that. But... Um, Jesus clearly wins the debates, and it baffles those that are listening along the way. But this is how he actually ends. He turns and he tells the people, not, not those that he's been debating or have been trying to debate with him. His words are, were, be on the lookout for false teachers. Watch out for the scribes who make a great show of religion, but are, but are first on the scene to swindle to swindle widows. Okay, so he he pretty well he takes a, he takes a swipe, and then this this um, this this whole discussion is probably happening between the columns at uh, Solomon's porch. All right, in uh, that location there were twelve chests, if you will, treasure chests. Um, they were um, they were trumpets, is is what they're referred to. So there are thirteen of those uh, there uh, on Solomon's porch between the columns. And basically what it was is there was a virus going around. I think it was COVID back then. And so what they did was they placed their mugs in the back. See, they didn't want to pass the mugs around. You know, pick it up when I'm putting it. So they put the mugs in the back, right? And so whatever the mission was, and, and their mission for those, it was always for the poor. So they had the mugs out there, 13 mugs, right? They called them trumpets. We call them mugs. And so as the people would come by, they would, they would put in their money for the poor. And so just as, just as Jesus has uh, had the debate with the people and won, and then he makes a statement, then he turns around and he has a beautiful sermon illustration just to walk in. And, uh, and this is uh, this object lesson right before their very eyes. And so join me in Mark 12, verses 41 through 44. I'm reading out of the message translation. <coughs> Sitting across from the offering box, he, that's Jesus, he was observing how the crowd tossed money in for the collection. Many of the rich were making large contributions. One poor widow came up and put in two small coins, a measly two cents. Jesus called his disciples, 
disciples over and said, The truth is that this poor widow gave more to the collection than all the others put together. All the others gave what they'll never miss. She gave extravagantly what she couldn't afford. She gave her all. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So notice how this translation started out, even in this contemporary translation. What does it say Jesus was sitting there watching? Do I need to read it again? Sit what? Watching the crowd, but sitting across from the offering box, he he was all, he was observing how he was observing how the crowd tossed money in for the collection. Jesus was not as interested in what they gave as he was in how they gave. He wasn't as interested in what as much as how. So, what did the rich give? Large contributions. We said some of them. Large contributions. And how did they give? They gave whatever they wouldn't miss. Right? Just this, I got some extra here. You know, and, and that's what they gave. But what did the widow give? Two small coins is, is what this translation says. But how did she give? One word popped out. Extravagantly. Extravagantly. She gave more to the collection. This is Jesus. More to the collection than all the others put together. She gave extravagantly what she couldn't afford. She gave her all. Now, is that how we would have witnessed it if we were to... Were to, were to see it going on. See, this passage is about sacrifice. This, this, this passage is about truly about uh, giving up one's life. Because ultimately, that's what Jesus does. You know, well, it was just a man dying. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't. He gave it all so that we might be able to, to have uh, life, so that we might be able to have hope. And Jesus contrasts the, the rich people who can afford to give plenty to, uh, to the temple treasurer and make sure that others see what it is that they're doing. See, uh, the trumpets acted as such. What does a trumpet do? It does, it's not quiet, especially if it's at my house, right? Trumpet, you're going to hear it. And that was the deal. They're, 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 they're made of metal. And so when you take metal coins and you put in, what do they do? They make a whole bunch of sound. And... Um, uh, and you know you can almost hear the 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 as they've saved it up and they've come and they just put it in there and it ting 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 sounds like me at the co at uh, what are those things called uh, uh, coin stars you know, I, I don't take just a little bit of pocket change I sit there and where you know I I'm, I got it under my arm my bag under my arm and I put it in there and it ching 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 and it's so much so that their kids are coming up going man you must be rich. No, I'm just lazy. I don't come up here often, you know. But 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 and that's what it is. When they would bring their collection, they would put it in, and it sounded like they were giving a whole bunch, and that made them very happy that someone would see, you know, look at what it is that I'm giving. But this poor widow, um, who has given who uh, has given her whole life, uh, all that she has, she gave all that she had to give on that day. She, 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 gave, she gave everything that she could. And her sacrifice, even though it was small, it was total. It, it, was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was everything. And not knowing her story, it would seem that it was a small gesture. But in fact, it was, it was, she was giving everything that she had. She was giving of her provisions, her provisions. Not just that extra stuff that we can take care of somebody else. It was her provisions. And in this scenario... The rich are involved. And the widow, she's committed. She's committed to, to uh, taking care of the poor. Isn't that interesting? Um, well, let's look at what their involvement looked like. Uh, giving some 
uh, wanting it to seem like it's more than it really was, and wanting to be recognized, wanting to be recognized for what it is, and what does the widow's commitment look like? Well, first of all, she knew that her her donation was not going to be a head turner, right? Or if so, you know, look at that little amount that she gave. She wasn't giving to be seen. But rather, she was there to worship. She was there to do good. She was there um, to do the right thing. That thing that she was prompted to do internally. And that's what she did. And so Jesus watched the behavior displayed before everyone. And in that woman, he saw a true follower. He saw a friend of God. He saw a lover of God. And uh, like like I said last week as I was kind of preparing you for today's message... Um, This message is not about money. It's not about money. What this message is about is about your heart. This isn't about money. And I'll hopefully make that clear in just a second. Um, When it it comes to actual money, um, I don't want you to give how the wealthy gave. They gave for show, Uh, they gave some, they gave that which they would never miss, right? What kind of sacrifice is even there? And this passage is about um, the heart and about sacrifice. I also don't want you to give what the widow gave. And some of you are starting to check out on me, stay with me. I I don't want you to give how... They gave, and I don't want you to give what she gave. Uh, There are times in life where even though, uh, uh, even most of times in life when I'll tell you, what do you need to give? You need to give 100%, right? You need to give it all. You you need to give 100%. And uh, there's some times that that absolutely does not make sense. I was talking to Teresa. Uh, the other day as she was uh, wearing her, uh, uh, where she gave blood. If you go to give blood, it's not the time to give 100%. It's, it's, it's not, right? After you go and you give the appropriate amount of blood, when you walk away, you feel, you know that you've given, you know, there you, you know. I mean, there's a little bit of a, huh. Oh, how about that? <laughs> and then you know they give you here, drink this juice, yeah, right? and then or, or suck on this piece of candy, whatever. And then you feel better. And what's interesting is you live to live another day, so that at the appropriate time, especially if you have one of those blood types that they really like, like Teresa, the phone rings. Hey, can you come? and you come back to give another day? And and that's the way it works because. Um, I've told this true story before. <coughs> it's actually locally. A man locally um, uh, got caught up in a good thing. And uh, he felt a need to help feed the hungry. And, and uh, Thanksgiving time was approaching. And I really don't remember uh, if it was the church had started the idea that they were going to do frozen turkeys and give to the needy. Or if it was this man's idea and he took it to the church. But, but either way, his church, he got involved in all this. And he got so wrapped up into what's a pretty good idea um, that he went out and he sold his van. So that he could take the proceeds of that to buy the turkeys for the church. And it was a wonderful Thanksgiving. You know, every, uh, look at all those people getting their turkeys. And it was wonderful up until... Monday morning, when the man didn't have a way to go to work, okay, and you're sitting there, and I'm telling you, I, I'm not going to say his name, but I can tell you that person's name. He got so caught up in, in that thing, and I think sometimes it is wonderful to get caught up in something, okay, but, you know, I, I truly think that if God were to look at that, he would say, you know what, yes, I planted this, this spirit of generosity in you, but I also gave you a brain. You know, I, I, I think God wants us to, uh, to understand what our, what, our, uh, what our goals are, what his goals are. 
and, and how it is that we, we need to accomplish those things. But uh, one might think <clears throat> uh, that about the, the widow and her gift. Uh, she gave not out of her abundance, but she gave out of her neediness. Um, she truly gave in faith, and maybe sometimes the Spirit does prompt you to give uh, occasionally in those ways so that God can show out, so that God can show uh, through his mighty acts. See, I told you I was going to take care of you. And, um, but once again, uh, remember, uh, he wasn't watching what she gave. He was, he was watching how, how she gave. And I, and I have to believe uh, that this widow gave uh, with total confidence that God was going to meet her needs as she, as, she, as she put it in there. And um, she, also, she also showed up, uh, lived out her life, I would even say intentionally, and, and what ended up happening. God received the glory for it. She showed up at just the right time for Jesus to be able to say, see, here you go. But as we look at this whole uh, finishing well, this whole finishing out the year, I want us to examine how we give, not what, although that will come into play. But, but how it is that we give. Are we joyful givers? I'll wait. Are we? Uh, do we only give that which we won't miss? Because I wouldn't put that in the sacrifice category. Um, we should all be giving out of our abundance because God is so good. He's faithful. Um, he, he, he's blessed us. He provides. And because of that, there should be a desire in us to give. I look forward to getting, I'm looking at the church treasurer right now. I look forward to getting paid regularly. But one of the things that thrills me most is that I know that next Sunday that rolls around, I get to put, I, I, I mean, I, 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 I enjoy, I didn't say it didn't hurt sometimes, but I, I enjoy giving. I enjoy giving. And right after today's worship service, <coughs> our advisory board is, is going to look at, uh, for their, their very first time, the proposed budget for 2022. We had a planning event back in September, which all of you were invited to, and uh, the ministry teams came together, and they decided what it was that God was calling for their particular area to do, and then they, for the upcoming year, and then they tried to figure out, okay, for us to do this, what is this going to cost? What, it, what is what is it going to take to do this? And then, so they totaled all of that, added, a, added it up together, and that number will be revealed to the board today. The executive board's already seen it. But the, um, the, um, the whole board will see it today. And when we take a peek at that, at that total, uh, do we go back and say, well, that would be nice and all. But uh, what is it that we need to, what is it that we can cut out of, you know, that's a big number. What can we cut out of that? Or do we sit down in absolute amazement? Say, I can't believe that God is entrusting us and calling us to do these big things, and be humbled that, that we are the ones that are, that are able to actually make it happen, that, that we have been uh, entrusted with that responsibility, and then we say yes to it. Um, ultimately, what, it, what we're able to say yes to and say no to actually falls in the hands of this congregation. Um, now, I'm not, I'm not saying... Uh, they, they may approve a budget that you're not committed to. But at the point that they do that, uh, you've got some good stewards here that we know how to, we know how to uh, cut back. But, you know, I, I, I prefer to see, you know, if God calls us to it, I believe he's going to. Um, it was interesting. Uh, last year we went through and we, uh, we sat there and we said, we can't do this, can't do this, can't do On paper. Can't do this, can't do this, can't do this. And so we took it off the paper. And you know what? God provided anyway. So ultimately, it doesn't matter. Um, so 
but wouldn't it be nice if we did? Um, and through the years, I've, I've heard the comments like, you know, uh, doesn't Mike know that there are people out here uh, that can help with those needs? And uh, just to put it out there, I typically don't solicit funds unless it's for the air conditioner. Sometimes I think if we passed a collection plate for the heat, <laughs> there <laughs> there would be some money coming from the corner here. <clears throat> but what I do try to do, and and some of you are like, what was that message about? Not today, because it's clear. Uh, but other days, what was that message? What what was that? Where was he going with it? And part of it, all I'm trying to do is prick your heart. What I try to do is keep the mission and ministry of this congregation ever before you. And I'm looking at the Holy Spirit convincing you to be committed to that thing. Yes, I want your involvement. But also, I'm looking for your commitment um, to making that uh, possible. See, uh, I, th I think that wasn't the first time that the widow had walked past those, the trumpet. To put her put her money in. I think it was a regular part of her worship. I, I and we we don't know this, but I think it was part of her daily walk, part of her daily giving, part of her daily communion with God was coming and giving it all. And if and if you have that picture in your mind, how many more the next day she comes by, she's even more willing and more trusting to put that in because she saw well God took care of this. You know he'll he'll he'll. Uh, take care of the, the next thing. As, as, as we start looking at finishing well, do we find ourselves waiting for someone to tell us that there's a need? Or are we trusting in the mission and ministry of the church so that we bring our tithes and offerings in here? Um, uh, and, and, you know, how, how, it, how are, we, are we cheerfully, are we joyfully bringing those things into the storehouse so that they might be multiplied and used for his purposes. Um, a lot of you don't know how many times the phone rings or there's somebody at the door uh, over there asking for help. I recently shared with a couple of families, um, typically in ministry, um, you see the, the times that the church, that the staff, that the body ministers to you. You don't see the... <laughs> That that happened to another family or another family or another. You don't, you don't see the totality of that thing. But I'm absolutely amazed at the good works of ministry that continue to flow in and through. You help people that you never ever meet. Their lives are changed because you decided to uh, put something in the back. I'm not talking about mug money right now. <laughs> I'm talking about the, the uh, offering basket in the back. Let us take time as we finish well to check ourselves, to see if we've lulled ourselves into this uh, being involved rather than being fully committed and giving it all. So this morning, the question is, um, how do you give your heart when he prompts you to? Is it, okay, well, I'll, I'm involved or am I committed? And last question is, when he calls you, are you giving it all? Lord gracious, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for loving us the way that you do. We have endured uh, a year and a half uh, that I never saw coming. Not only have we endured, we have prospered. We've grown closer to one another uh, individually but the corporate side has lacked as we finish well draw us closer to each other in the process draw us closer to you help us to finish well help us to, to uh, 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 know what it means to give sacrificially of our time of our talents of our resources let us do this heart check this morning and ask ourselves, what is it that you're calling us to give that we don't want to give? What is it that you're wanting us to uh, walk away from that we're not willing to walk away from? And 
what do we need to walk towards that we're fearful of? Help us to see you at that place with your arms wide open, asking us to come and give it all to him. We pray these things in the blessed and holy name of Jesus. Amen. The altar's open this morning for whatever it is that um, he's dealing with you uh, on. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I'd love to have a conversation with you about that. If you're uh, part of another church and looking for a church home, uh, Karen's here. We don't have members here, but we have partners in ministry, and we would love for you to come and partner with us. Um, whatever whatever uh, he's calling you, convincing you to deal with this morning, the altar of the Lord is open.
the storm. We've gathered in here worship. Now it's time to go and be the church. Amen.